Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. Here we have a new lock, and this is the Carbine Enduro, N G D U R O screen door lock. I think that's how you say it. Okay, so let's have a look at this. This is a for a hinged door, security screen door lock. This is brand new, so we're going to do a quick unboxing, and then we're going to go over the feature and see what it can do and things along those lines. So first of all, here's the box. Just the same as any other screen door cylinder box. Pretty much compatible to the MK2. You know, size for size, identical. So, it's very interesting that they would make this lock. And one of the questions I asked um, the manufacturer when they said there's a new lock coming out, I asked them, why would you go to all the trouble of making a lock for a market which is very cheap anyway? I mean, a lot of screen door locks, they're not super overly expensive. And if you're going to put so much um, design and research and you know, design into some a product and testing and all that and spend all that money, well, I would have thought you would have gone with a more expensive product so you make more money. But uh, what they came back with and said is, is because we do it better and uh, we make a better product. And I thought, well, that's that's good. You know, so now we can finally have a, a bit more of a quality product on the market when it comes to screen door, screen door locks, which is good when we sell it to our customers because there's less chance of us getting a recall, less chance of it breaking or failing, and then us having to go back. So some of the differences here with this one, and I'll, before I unbox it, is there's less uh, moving parts inside. There's no plastic parts. And unlike some of the other locks, like the Lockwood screen door lock, they're probably not using that cheap, nasty grease that turns into glue. So I'll read some of the benefits on the side of it here for you. The carbine screen door lock locks are e easily retrofitted uh, to a variety of common model of three point and single single hinge doors. So even if you've got a three point locking, you can um, refit this one. And that goes for a couple of models, which we'll get into later. All common brands and cylinders will operate in this carbine lock. So what they're talking about is a cylinder here. If it's got a floating cam, like this one here, then it will work. So this is a carbine cylinder. It comes with a, a long screw that you're not going to need. It comes with a little short metric screw there you are going to need. It comes with two keys and comes with your actual cylinder here. Now this cylinder is a carbine one. It's very keyable. You can take off one side at a time, undo that, take it off, put your pit bottom pins in, put your drivers, put your springs in and away you go. So you can re-key it. Or you can come with the actual keys, ready to go, sometimes key like or key different however you want it. A floating cam cylinder are used on screen door locks. This, that means this middle part here rotates like this and it's moving. It's moving without the key being in. That's what we call a floating cam. So if you have one for a Batman lock or a Wico floating cam cylinder, that's going to work too. As long as it's got that, move, got that part in the middle that moves, you're going to be right to use that on this lock. So with this, um, yeah, so you can reuse your old cylinder and save you money when you're purchasing one. Okay, so that's uh, non-handed design. Okay, so with the actual hands, we can go left and right. I'll show you that in a second. Lock body available in the same color as handles. Okay, so that's very interesting. As we go with this uh, Wico Tasman, and I'll, I'll just show you the picture on the side here if uh, we can zoom in here. Okay, so what was happening a lot of the time is that um, you were getting the handles in a primrose or a white or a brown, but on the edge of the door here, this lock body was always in black. So I guess the manufacturer said, hey, why are we spending so money and so much time doing the edge of the door when nobody really sees it? But on the other side of the fence, a lot of people thought, well, that looks pretty shitty because now you open the door and you see this black edge and that's not very nice. So a lot of people weren't too impressed with it, but you know, they did that to cut corners. But basically, yeah, the edge, the actual lock itself was always, well, has been black for the last few years and the handles were a different color. So if you bought a primrose lock, you get primrose handles, black body and primrose handles. So what Carbine's saying here is that if you buy a white lock, you, you get a white body as well. So that's interesting. Um, design for much longer life than other locks. Okay, that's good. This results in much less lag, uh, lever lag, sorry, this results in much less lever uh, sag. Okay, so with this particular lock, type of lock, this is a Wico Mark II, and this was one of the ones that always very, very common to get uh, lever sag. And what that means is you'll have one of these on your door, and eventually over time, maybe not with this model, but with a lot of the old ones, over time the handle starts to sag like this. And what happens is you go to lock your door, you can't lock it. You've actually got to put your finger on it, lift it back up to this position, and then you can actually key lock it. So that's what we call lever sag, and that, that's a little bit annoying. And the lock still works, so a lot of people use it in that way for many, many years, but it is a bit of a bad feature that the MK2 sort of had. A superior quality of materials and designs have uh, 
have produced a lock that outlasts all the majority of other brands and test cycles. Okay, so they're saying that this lock will outlast a, a, a Wico. Um, they'll also say that it'll outlast the Austral Elegance. And um, when I was speaking to the rep, I swear he said the Lockwood one as well, which is really good because um, if I could just carry this one lock in my car, I don't have to carry like all these other ones. Like when you when space is you know really hard to get, and you got all these locks, you got the Austral, the um, Tasman, the Mark One, the Mark Two, then you got the Lockwood, and then there's a couple of the other after that as well, and that's not even including the spare parts. So it would be good to streamline it, and I believe that's what they're trying to do with this lock here. Uh, no plastic components. Okay, cool. So if you can actually, you know, have one lock instead of three in your vehicle, then why would you not have that? You would. You would just buy this one lock, and that would allow you to do those times when you've got a three-point locking Austral Elegance, or you've got a three-point locking um, Mark II. You would just pull this out. Okay, so let's go through and see what's in the box. This is my unboxing instructions. Striker plate, same as always, looks identical to a Mark II Tasman. Uh, spindle looks identical to a Mark II Tasman, nothing new there. So here's a little part here which is quite interesting. It looks like the back of an Elegance with the whole configuration. I've got two little black push-in caps there, most likely for the handles. Okay, so here's where we get a bit funky. We have um, different screws here. So we have two short little screws with a wood, -headed, uh, wood head thread, wood head thread. So no, it's not, it's not the right way of saying. We have two little screws here with a wooden thread which will be used to actually sit the lock body in the door. So here you are here, here's your lock body. So that would go there and there. That's those two little screws that come with it. You also have two other screws with a metal thread on them. They would be used to keep your two handles together. You then have two longer wood, uh, wooden screws with a wooden thread. They would be used for your striker plate. Two screws on them, go in your door jam. Then you have another one single uh, metal thread which is used for your cylinder right here. Now, if you buy a, a carbine cylinder, you actually get the, that screw as well. So, a couple of extra screws. Looking at the lock body itself, I mean, um, it's pretty much identical to everything else. On the back is a, a different uh, configuration. The body size is the, identically the same. We'll look at that in a second. But I mean, it's what's inside that will make all the difference. So, weight-wise, it feels a little bit, a little bit light, a little bit heavier actually. Okay, uh, and then we've got the handle. Okay, so let's have a look at how this looks. So there's our outside handle, powder coated, nice finish. Yeah, that looks nice. Actually, let's check something. What's the configuration here? Oh, okay, so it's the same footprint, almost identical. Yeah, same footprint. So same um, stud pattern here, same spindle, uh, same cylinder, and same again. What they have done is they've gone bigger and better on the actual um, size of the of the plate. So that's good. If you've got any scratches or any marks when you take this one off, you'll probably be able to cover the top and the bottom with these new handles. So it'll look like a nice, neat, fresh job, which is good. So that will go through there, through the actual lock body itself, through this hole and through this hole here. Then we come along with our handle here. So these are rehandable, um, rehandable, I guess you could say. So if you want it going left, it goes left. It's got these two springs here, so you just rotate this down and you can go the other direction. Or you go down and you go the other direction. That's how simple it is to rehand these ones. They've got two vertical uh, tension springs just keeping them there, and that's really good. On this side here, you've got this internal like snip. Now that doesn't fall out as well, so that's one less thing that you've got to muck around with while you're putting it all together. That's actually fixed in there with a circlip. Now, when you are putting this on the door, okay, and you're looking at it this way, this nib goes up. It doesn't go in front of the cylinder like this, although I've seen it done that way a few times. Don't do that. You put it up 12 o'clock position. All right, so let's uh, put this on the door. Okay, so the only thing we're missing there is our spindle. Our spindle will go through there, and then we drop the cylinder straight through. Screw, screw. Uh, screw, screw, screw. And that's what the lock looks like. Okay, so let's um, let's do a couple of comparisons here. As we've done the handles, we know they're bigger, so they're out of the way. Let's look at the Mark II just to start off with. Okay, so lock body. So there's the Mark II with the Mark II circle. This operates a plastic piece of plastic, which I might be able to show you on the instructions, which operates the three-point locking. That is quite common to break. So. Uh, where are we? Okay, here we are here. I'll have to zoom in for this. 
Just bear with me here. Okay, let that focus a little bit. Okay, there we go. I think we're in focus now. Okay, so there's your lock body, your Mark II Tasman lock body right there. And it's got this circle hole part on the back where this piece of plastic lines up. And as, the th as it moves up and down, the three-point locking um, engages. So that's, um, that's for the Wico Tasman Mark II. For the Austral Elegance, you have this configuration here. And um, this is like, you have a lock and then a, a die cast plate where the cables of the actual uh, three-point locking fit into. As where the Mark II is using a piece of plastic and then you've got metal rods going up and down. So, to stop, stop the waffling and get to the point, why is that important? Because on the back here, you see how this has a circle right here? That will slide straight in with your Mark II uh, three-point locking. So if you want to swap out a, a broken Mark II, Wico, Mark, sorry, Wico Tasman Mark II with three-point locking, you could just pop this one straight in there for that. So nothing really different there. Oh yeah, size-wise, did we look at size? I think we're looking pretty identical. Look at that. There's not much in them. Lock body, same, height, same, width, same, uh, latches, yeah, same, same, better, better powder coating on this one, this one looks like it's been in a spray booth, so, okay, lock body, same, alright, so that's the Tasman, compar oh yeah, the striker plates, look at the striker plates, I'll show you all that, it's just the same, there's a Tasman striker plate, there's the new carbine one. Oh, carbine one, slightly larger by the look of it. Slightly larger hole in it, if I'm correct, just by looking at it. Oh, only by a millimetre or two. But yeah, slightly, uh, slightly more room. Okay, let's get the MK2 out of the way. We've seen them, we've seen them to death. Everybody knows them. Let's look at the Elegance. Okay, Austral Elegance. Now this is a push to go function, which is a new function on the Austral Elegance. A lot of them didn't come out with that. So when you look at the Austral Elegance K, okay, you get all that. Uh, you get these little bags that look like they've been done at the fruit shop. Uh, once again, you get your striker screws, all that. All that is pretty straightforward. You do have your removable turn snip here. That turn snip where it's actually built in. This one here is loose. Same with the Mark II, that's loose. You've got to put it in. Uh, packaging, well, much of a muchness. This one's just put in bags and twisted. So nothing really changing there. What we want to have a look at is this three-point locking uh, selection here. So this is Austral Elegance three-point locking setup and on the back you can see this plug right here. This is where you actually fit this, uh, this plate here. You get this plate and you put this over the top here. Okay and then you come through and you get your cables like so. I've got to zoom in for you here so you can get a better look at what's going on. Okay so you see that plate there, that big chunky, I'll pull it off again. That big bit of die cast there, that sits on the back of the lock like so, okay, and then you basically uh, come along, you put your cables in, in here, and this part gets locked into position right there, can you see that? Then when this slide, when this little bit here slides up and down, it pulls this cable, and it pulls the opposite side cable as well. Once this cable's been pulled, you can see what happens on this side of the fence, okay, so that's how, the, that's how the Austral Elegance three-point locking system cable, three-point locking system works. So um, yeah, a whole heap of components and all the rest, but once you get it together, it's you know, not always trouble free. They can be a bit of work to actually get in and out of the door. So the carbine have wanted to tackle this as well. And what they've done here is they've come up with uh, this little part here, which we're gonna take out of the bag. Oh, and these two little black grommets, in, there for the screws on the inside handle. Cover up your, cover up your screws. Okay, so there's our little part right there, and you see this hole on the side, which is countersunk. That would be where you'd put that little screw in, which is included. Now they've gone to a lot of work to make this little part. Feels like die cast. So you put that in the side there. You get your little screw. You put it on the side, and there we have the same lock body as that. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We have the uh, same configuration as that by the look of it. Why is that one up and that one's down? So this must be in the different position. Okay, let's flick that. Let's just check that. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver to activate this. 
Okay, does that look better? That looks better. Okay. So, this lock can replace the Austral Elegance. And side by side, everything's lining up, everything's looking good. Alright, so it looks as if um, in the box was not included this Austral Elegance, uh, uh, what would you say, connecting plate. So you still need that, or it'll probably already be on the door. Slide that over the top there. Now I'm pushing it in a lot harder and a lot firmer than I did on the Elegance, which is a good thing because you want, you want this to be a snug fit. So they've uh, really done that well. Once it's pushed in, it's not coming out. That part there, I didn't actually put the screw in. That's my fault, that fell out. And there you have it there. So once this moves up and down, once again, you've got the cables on either side. Once it's moved, the cable's going to pull and do the three-point locking. So that's kind of interesting. Um, they've made a lock which is compatible. So they've made it um, in such a way that you can use it for the uh, MK2 and the Austral Elegance. Now, one of the things with the Austral Elegance is that it does come with a special uh, pole kit which has adjustable poles. And for that, you actually need to knock out this little rivet here. You knock that out. So when I look at this one here, um, this one here, you can't knock that rivet out, which is a little bit disappointing. So if you wanted to use the adjustable poles on this, you would actually have to re-drill this hole through here, or they'd need to make a special part. So we do sell a number of those ones uh, because they, they, um, the rods can be adjusted and it allows you to put it in place of whatever screen or lock you wanted. So yeah, that's the only difference. This part is only for the Austral Elegance cable. All right, so um, looking over the lock itself, you know, I'm fairly happy. I've got nothing to, nothing bad to say about it. It looks pretty good. Um, having to carry less stock in my car is really cool. If I'm gonna buy a lock, I might as well get one that's compatible. And um, you know, before I'd, I'd normally carry two, now I can just carry one. And if the quality's better, that's gonna be better for us because we're gonna get less recalls. I know with the Wico Tasp Mark II, they're normally fairly, fairly solid. They do last a number of years, but it was the Mark III that always played up. Um, the Mark II had a bit of a problem when you put the cylinder in and you try to tighten up the screw, tighten it too much and it was always binding. That was a bit of an issue. There was a whole heap of issues actually um, with the Tasman. Leave your issues down below in the comments. It's always good to see uh, what people you know had issues with. And then we all the locksmiths read them. They go, oh yeah, I had that issue too. Oh yeah, I had that issue too. Um, yeah, with the Elegance, I haven't had too many issues. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit fun to slide it up and down and get the, the cylinder out with a three-point locking kit installed and uh, get it all lined up. You know, there's little tricks to that one. Um, as for the carbine, well, it's going to be um, out there on the market. We're going to see, you know, how good it is. I mean, if it's going to break, it's going to break. If it's going to last and be rock solid, it's going to last and be rock solid. But with all the research and development and design they've put into um, this particular type of lock and a lot of their other locks, they don't kind of do things by half, so I reckon it's going to be uh, definitely, um, you know, a leading product. A lot of uh, Carbine's products I use over other products, actually. Uh, like, um, I, sorry, I use some of their Lenlock T-handles with clutching function. Uh, some of their cylinders I like more. Um, you know, there is differences when they kind of make it. And they seem to be coming out with their own locks these days. They're not just reselling um, locks. They seem to have their own locks, which is interesting. So, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's see how this goes. Um, leave your comments down below if you've uh, installed one of these yet. Leave your comments down below if you see any good or any bad things about it. It's always good to see what people think. And uh, would you consider buying one and keeping one in your truck because it's uh, more compatible? Okay, thanks for watching.